We have been introduced to perturbation theory uh, and we have discussed why I think this cat represents perturbation theory nicely. Today we will complete our discussion, we will get an expression for uh, the uh, delta E, the first order correction to energy and we will do a very, very simple example uh, of an application of perturbation theory. Then uh, for the next few modules we are going to talk about applications in uh, progressively more chemical chemistry related systems. But uh, before we do that let us quickly recap what we have discussed already. We have said that the scope of perturbation theory is that it works when the deviation from the unperturbed system is very, very small. We can write the Hamiltonian of the perturbed system as 0 th order Hamiltonian for plus a first order correction. We can write the wave function as 0th order wave function plus first order correction delta C and we can write E as 0th order energy plus first order correction to energy delta E. Uh, before going further it may make sense to say that uh, this expression is of course incomplete. I might want to do, uh, I might want to invoke uh, second order, third order perturbations, sometimes it might be necessary. Uh, in the next module we are going to discuss a case where first order perturbation with a certain kind of uh, expression of a quantity just does not work. You either have to change that quantity or you have to invoke second order perturbation. Okay? So, it is not necessary that first order correction is uh, be all and end all of it, but for most of our purposes we are going to stick to first order correction. All right. Then what we did is we set up Schrodinger equation in terms of h hat psi and e this is what it is and since delta psi and delta e are small changes uh, we figured that this h1 hat the first order correction to Hamiltonian multiply operating on delta psi and delta e multiplied by delta psi remember it is an operator so it cannot be multiplied by delta psi it is operating on delta psi. So uh, these two are products of small quantities so they are 0. We also said that h 0th operating on psi 0th is the same as e 0th multiplied by psi 0th because that is your Schrodinger equation for the unperturbed system. So, they cancel each other we are left with h uh, 0th minus e 0th operating on delta psi plus first order correction to Hamiltonian operating on psi 0th is equal to delta e multiplied by the unperturbed wave function. Here we said that let us not forget that this unperturbed energy subtracted from the unperturbed Hamiltonian is in itself an operator. In this case it is operating on delta psi. The problem with that is that we do not know what happens when it operates on delta psi. We perfectly know what happens when it operates on uh, 0th order wave function right? because h 0th is equal to e 0th multiplied by psi 0th. So, h 0th minus E 0 operating on psi 0 is equal to 0. So, if somehow we can replace delta psi by psi 0 then uh, we know how to go about this that is what we are essentially trying to do. So, to do that first of all we left multiply by psi 0 star and integrate over all space this is the expression we get on the right hand side we get delta E multiplied by the integral of the 0th order wave function unperturbed wave function and its complex conjugate this integral of course is equal to 1. So, uh, right hand side gets cleaned up we get only delta E and the left hand side uh, we are now trying to find out what would be this expression here and to do that this is where we have got so far we have remembered that quantum mechanical operators must necessarily have real Eigen values because the uh, one of the central themes of quantum mechanics is that the eigenvalues of quantum mechanical operators are the values of the observables these operators stand for. So, you cannot have a physical observable with an imaginary value. If, I, if you ask me what is the position and I say the position is f root 5 into i 
what does that mean? It means it is not in real space. Okay? So, that cannot be the case if I ask what is the momentum and you say 0 0.32 multiplied by omega or 0 0.32 minus 5.6 i. What kind of momentum is that? Momentum position these have to be real quantities. So, eigenvalues must be real for quantum mechanical operators using this we have got this expression here integral f star a hat f d tau is equal to integral f multiplied by a hat f star d tau. So, what we are seeing is what we are trying to do is we are trying to interchange the basis. Here at least we have been able to interchange this complex conjugate and a function by itself. Okay? Left multiplication here is by complex conjugate, left multiplication here is by the actual function, but our job is not done because here the two functions are different is something like integral f star a hat g d tau. Here we have integral f star a hat f d tau. So, we have to somehow uh, bring in a g here then we know what this is going to be and that is what we will proceed to do from here. Okay. So, since we need a g let us simply write this same expression in terms of g without any loss of generality. I am talking about a function how does it matter if you call it f or if you call it g or if you call it phi or whatever you want to call it a rose called by any other name smells just as sweet. So, we write this, but then there is a reason why we have written it it is not just uh, we, are, we want to bring in a different function here and to do that what we do is we take a linear combination of f and g and we take psi is equal to c1 multiplied by f plus c2 multiplied by g. Why? Because we want an integral f star a hat g d tau. Okay? This uh, linear combination will enable us to do exactly that. We are going to jump steps there because it is lengthy if you want you can do it yourself. <coughs> you will not have to remember anything as long as we understand the logic we are good. Okay. So, now see this f is any general function right. So, instead of f I might as well write psi. So, I can write integral psi star a hat psi d tau all right let me write what happens when I take psi and put it here in this equation I get integral psi star a hat psi d tau is equal to integral psi a hat psi we take complex conjugate of the whole thing d tau it is as simple as that. But what is psi? Psi is a linear combination of f and g yeah. So, what I do is I just write that instead of this I will write integral c 1 f plus c 2 g star a hat operating on c 1 f plus c 2 g d tau is equal to integral c 1 f plus c 2 g multiplied by a hat operating on c 1 f plus c 2 g full star d tau. d tau okay. and then uh, what we do is we expand this that is the step that I want to skip. Uh, it is not all that difficult also as a hat operating on this uh, linear sum what will it be? It will be c 1 multiplied by a hat f star a hat f plus c 2 multiplied by a hat g it is as simple as that linear operators is not it and then you just open this up. So, this way you just do it using the values of f and g and you put in these expressions also 
it is a little tedious but not impossible to come to this expression. C1 star C2 multiplied by integral of f star a hat g minus g into a star f star d tau is equal to C1 C2 star multiplied by integral f a hat star g star minus g star a, a hat f integrated over all space. Okay. Now see we are almost there look at this integral instead of psi 0 I will write f instead of delta psi I will write g integral f star a hat g f star a hat g. So, we are getting to uh, the functional form that we require, but before we get there it is important to uh, now develop uh, an, uh, an understanding of the situation and that is where we are going to uh, embark upon or, or where, where we are going to reach a very important property of quantum mechanical operators. Let us see. See first of all this left hand side here is the complex conjugate of the right hand side is not it. See C1 star C1, C2, C2 star, F star A hat G, F A hat star G, G star, G A hat star F star, G star A hat F. So, right hand side and left hand side are complex conjugates of each other point number 1. Point number 2 is well it is an equation. So, of course, LHS equal to RHS. So, what are we saying here? We are saying that uh, LHS and RHS are complex conjugates of themselves. Okay. That uh, is going to happen only when LHS and RHS are real otherwise it is impossible. Uh, something similar also comes when you talk about what are called Hermitian matrices, matrix algebra. So, uh, LHS and RHS have to be real it is as simple as that. Now see the C1 star C1 and C2 they are perfectly arbitrary constants. I have not told you that this is 5 and this is 3i or other way around or anything. So, uh, naturally uh, since these are arbitrary complex quantities we should expect that C1 star C2 in the general case is going to be complex. Yeah, because we are multiplying two complex numbers either C1 star and C2 both have to be real or C2 has to be the uh, complex conjugate of C1 star uh, then only this uh, C1 star C2 C1 C2 star these are going to be real, but that is not the case that would be a very very specific case we are we have written a general expression. So, uh, these are arbitrary complex quantities these are complex quantities. So, what about the rest? Remember left hand side let us work with the left hand side first left hand side is real left hand side is made up of two factors. The first one is C1 star C2 second one is this F star integral uh, second one is the integral. Similarly, right hand side is C1 C2 star multiplied by another integral. Now, each is real in the left hand side if focusing there C1 star C2 we said in the general case has to be complex which means that uh, the integral either has to be its complex conjugate because the product of the integral and C1 star C2 is uh, uh, real. So, either the integral has to be uh, complex conjugate of C1 star C2, but if that is the case once again generality is lost that is a specific case. Okay. We do not want to talk about specific cases we want to see if there is something that is absolutely general. Similarly, on the right hand side also uh, the same thing will happen. So, what is the only other situation in which we have a complex number multiplied by a quantity and the product is real unless the second quantity is a is a complex conjugate of the complex number the only other option you have is that the second quantity is 0. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0 provided it is not 0 1 by 0 anything real or imaginary does not matter multiply by 0 you are going to get 0. So, the general solution is that these integrals on the two sides must be equal to 0 all right integral f star a hat g minus g 
a hat star f star d tau must be equal to 0. Similarly, integral f multiplied by a hat star g star minus g star a hat f d tau is also equal to 0. Well, there are too many f's and g's and stars here. Please do not get scared, please do not get confused. Stop the video here if you have not understood, replay, replay as many times as you need and it will sink in. It will sink in faster if you do it by yourself. So, this is something that we are saying in almost every module. Please make sure that uh, in addition to hearing what I am saying, you write down the same thing so that you practice. Okay. So, this is 0. So, let us clean up things a little bit and before doing that, uh, this is actually the definition of Hermitian operators. Okay. An operator that satisfies this condition that this integral is 0 is called a Hermitian operator and Hermitian operators as we see have real eigenvalues. This is the definition. Uh, do not say that Hermitian operators definition is that they have real eigenvalues that is a corollary. This is the really the definition we have sort of back calculated starting from real eigen functions we have uh, shown that the operator has to be Hermitian this integral has to be equal to 0. Okay. So, let us clean up things now and write this integral f star a hat g minus g multiplied by a hat star f star d tau equal to 0. Okay. So, what we can do is uh, we can expand the left hand side and get 2 terms and since 1 has minus sign we can take it to the right hand side. That way we get integral f star a hat g d tau is equal to g multiplied by a hat star f star d tau and that is a happy situation. Why? Because uh, look at this psi 0 star let us say that is f h 0 h 0 minus e 0 that is your let us say a hat and this is g. The problem we have here is that g that is delta psi is not an eigenfunction of h 0 minus e 0 but psi 0 is an eigenfunction. So, if we can somehow take this delta 0 here and bring this psi 0 here then uh, that is a happy situation. I mean it is ok if we bring psi 0 star also but that will not happen. Okay. And this equation is what allows me to do that. I have an operator operating on a function left multiplied by another function. What it says is that within the integral sign you can just interchange the two uh, functions. Right? Uh, instead of f star now f star will come here g will go there. So, this is what we get. So, using this expression we get delta psi star multiplied by h 0 minus e 0. Now, h 0 complex is ok, e 0 complex, e 0 complex is e 0 complex, h 0 complex does not make a difference. So, h 0 minus e 0 operating on psi 0 d tau. So, this expression here gets transformed, this integral here gets transformed to another integral where we have this problematic delta psi star factor multiplying an operator operating on its wave function on its Eigen function. Now, tell me what is the Eigen value of this h 0 minus e 0 operator for psi 0 I can find Eigen value and I can do it fairly easily. Remember Schrodinger equation for the unperturbed system, unperturbed Hamiltonian operating on unperturbed wave function gives us energy of the unperturbed system multiplied by unperturbed wave function. Okay. So, let us bring uh, this to the left hand side we get h hat 0 th psi 0 th minus e 0 th psi 0 th equal to 0 or we get I can write like this h hat 0 th minus e 0 th that is the operator we are working with operating on psi 0 th is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, first thing we have done is we have transformed this integral to another one in which we have h 
0th minus e 0th operating on psi 0th and we have found that this h 0th minus e 0th operating on psi 0th is 0. So, inside the integral we have delta psi 0th multiplied by 0 integrated over all space what will it be? Definitely it is going to be 0. Okay. So, now after all this exercise uh, we are happy to see that even this problematic term is actually 0, you do not have to worry about it. So, finally we get an expression for the first order correction to energy and that expression is delta E equals integral unperturbed wave function multiplied by the first order correction term to Hamiltonian operating on the unperturbed wave function itself integrated over all space. Okay. Another way of writing it in direct notation that is often done as we have discussed a little bit is we can write this same thing as psi 0th h hat h hat psi 0 integrated over all space this is your delta E. Uh, I think we are now familiar with this expression there should be no problem. So, we have got an expression for the first order correction to energy. Now to uh, conclude our discussion let us think of applications of this simple perturbation theory in some systems. Now before that uh, just for the records this is called time independent perturbation theory because we are working with time independent wave functions. We are not working with time dependent wave functions, time dependent because we are working with uh, stationary states here right. When we work with uh, when we talk about spectroscopy at that time it will be imperative that we use time dependent perturbation theory. But if you understand time independent perturbation theory, time dependent perturbation theory is actually child's play not difficult at all. So, we are going to see its application today we are going to talk about this kind of a system a particle in a box with a slanting bottom and in the next module we are going to discuss uh, what is called an anharmonic oscillator and that is where we will see what kind of problems we face if we do not define our perturbation properly or if we try to stop at too lo low level of correction. So let us start. So what we are doing is we want to talk about particle in a box with a slanting bottom which means a particle in a box with an x dependent potential. Okay. So to start with what will be the unperturbed system our uh, good old particle in a box where v equal to 0 for all values of x, v equal well all values of x within 0 and a where 0 and a are the limits of the box and outside it is infinity. So, for such a system for a particle in a box with infinite height of the walls the wave function as we have discussed is root over 2 by a sin n pi x divided by a and energy is n square h square divided by 8 m a square simple. Now we want to bring in the perturbation to the system to arrive at our uh, box with a slanting bottom. So, this is the perturbation we bring. Okay. So, let us say at x equal to a the perturbation potential is v. Remember what we are trying to do is we are trying to get an expression for the first order correction to the energy uh, brought in by this slanting bottom. To do that we will need to know what the first order correction to Hamiltonian is first order correction to Hamiltonian will be of course the uh, potential energy. What is the potential energy? It is equal to 0 for x equal to 0, it is equal to capital V let us say for uh, x equal to A. So, what you have here is a straight line going through the origin. So, very simple right uh, h first order for any value of x is going to be x divided by A multiplied by V it is uh, quite simple not difficult at all. 
okay. x divided by a multiplied by v, v is the value at a. So, we take this expression for the first order correction to Hamiltonian and we plug it into the expression for delta e. This is what we get and of course, we have to use the expression for psi 0 as well. So, delta e turns out to be integral 0 to a psi 0 star which is the same as psi 0 because psi 0 is a real wave function multiplied by x into v divided by a multiplied by psi 0 integrated over all values of x from 0 to a simple as that. Now, here this v is a constant is not it a is also a constant. So, v and a can come outside the integral and uh, what do we get here? psi 0 is root over 2 by a sin n pi x by a and there are 2 of them. So, I get 2 by a from there as well. So, what comes outside the integral is 2 by a multiplied by uh, v by a something like that. So, 2 v divided by a square that comes out and inside you are left with integral 0 to a x into sin square n pi x by a dx. Of course, you can work this out yourself it is an integration not a very difficult one, but it is a standard integral uh, we know the solutions already so we are going to just put the uh, value from uh, the compendium the value of the standard integral turns out to be a square by 4. So, the value for delta e that we have is 2 v divided by a square multiplied by a square by 4 that turns out to be v by 2. So, you see how simply how easily we have been able to find out the uh, value for the first order correction to energy of the system even without working out what the wave function actually is. This is the beauty of approximation methods you do not have to know the wave function to, to get the energy you can get the energy first then worry about the wave function. So, let me just write this remember uh, energy in particular in a box is quantized we said earlier that e 0th order energy for nth level is n square h square by 8 m square. Now, in the perturbed system you need this correction term of v by 2. So, this is the expression for the energy of the nth energy level E n is equal to n square h square by 8 m square plus v by 2. So, what has happened to the energy level of particle in a box because of this uh, slanting thing? What has happened is that every energy level has simply got offset by v by 2. What is v? v is the perturbation potential at x equal to a. So, this energy here is not x dependent okay. potential energy is x dependent fine energy is not it would have been a little unhappy situation if it was okay. but it is not. So, it is a good thing that we see that n square h square by 8 m square plus v by 2 this is what we get. Now, see um, v would better be small right and you can think of very large values of v. What about n square h square by 8 m square we have talked about what kind of energies they can be. If v is very large then of course, this treatment is not even valid yeah because that delta e in, into delta psi that you cannot equate to 0 anymore if delta e is large. So, you have to work with v's that are small enough if v itself is close to infinity of course, this treatment is not valid but otherwise it is and we see an elegant and simple example of application of time independent perturbation theory to a simple model system. Next day next module we go on and discuss uh, application of the same time independent perturbation theory to your uh, anharmonic oscillator. Remember harmonic oscillator equispace energy levels and so on and so forth we will discuss why it cannot be really be the case for say diatomic molecules and it has to be a uh, it has to look different. So, you have to bring in anharmonicity we are going to bring in anharmonicity as a perturbation and uh, we will get a correction term to the energy while we do that we will come upon something interesting. After an anharmonic oscillator we want to see how one can use perturbation theory to talk about helium atom remember we we are talking about helium atom two modules ago from there we have taken a sort of a break and we are learning perturbation theory only because we can go back we, we have to go back to the same system and use it this is not a digression we are developing the tool 
so that we can use it in our atomic system. Please do not lose uh, the focus of what we really want to do after this. But to get there we must learn the workings of the theory and the best way of learning it is uh, to make the theory work on model systems and while doing that we also get some interesting results that are uh, relevant to molecules also right. Even this kind of a uh, slanting box can be there in uh, conjugated molecules in which all atoms are not carbon and anharmonic oscillators are ubiquitous in uh, molecular vibrators ok. So, that is the reason why we are doing this, but do not forget that all this is really a part of our discussion of many electron atoms to understand which we are going to use this uh, perturbation theory.